What's up guys, Eve Business Insider here, and today we're going to be doing a little station trading. So what you're looking at is a 30 day plex price in JITA. Uh, this is a module or item rather that I run into more frequently than I'd like to. Um, by the end of the series we want to be making at least two of these per month in completely passive ways or semi-passive ways. And trading, station trading is definitely one of those, uh, one of those major contributing factors that's going to help us get there. So if you've never looked into trading before, you are going to need to go out and get some skills. Um, there's quite a few skills in the category. You can look into the category. It's called trade, obviously. Um, the four main categories of these skills that are most important are as follows. Accounting for transaction taxes. Broker relations for broker fees. Now, both of those are just to reduce the amount of money you're going to pay to set up each order. Um, when someone buys from you or sells to you or whatever, you're going to pay a little bit of fees on each direction. And these will, you know, begin to stack up as the price starts to decline, uh, and the margin starts to decline in whatever given item you're trading. And so we'll have to keep this in mind. Make sure whenever trading at a negative margin, and of course, the higher these skills are, the less likelihood that you will have to encounter that problem. Uh, margin trading is the third one. Uh, this controls how much escrow you need to put forward with each additional buy order. That's a bit of a kind of complex mechanic. We'll get into it a little bit later. Uh, and then the last category contains about four or five skills, the first two of which are trade and retail, and this is the number of slots that you can have. Okay, now I want to do a little bit of UI setup before we get started. So first of all, I want to introduce the quick bar. Um, I really didn't use the quick bar for a really long time. I thought, hey, I'm not going to do that much trading. It's probably not that useful. It turns out it's quite useful. Um, it's easy to come up with a label scheme for yourself where you can copy mine. Um, that's going to save you a lot of time in the long run. Uh, now when we come over to settings, there's a couple things we can do. First of all, we can filter for jumps like I've done from zero to zero jumps, obviously because we don't care to see anything outside of G to 4.4, unless you do, and then don't filter that, of course. Uh, and then at the bottom here we have mark my orders, which is going to make seeing our orders obviously a lot easier. It's going to highlight them in blue, whether they're buy orders or sell orders or what have you. So, okay, now I've got a watch list set up. This is where I keep, you know, all the items that I'm not actively trading at the moment. Um, and I've developed this over the last few months, I suppose, and I would be willing to share it. It's not some key secret list or anything like that. It's just a bunch of T2 items, stuff that's fairly common, you know, capper chargers, ballistic control systems, different types of hardeners, you know, as many super common items and things as I can squeeze in there. And this is really what I like to trade, you know. I don't like to trade super high volume like adaptive invulns you know usually there's not a lot of margin there i prefer to trade stuff that has a little bit higher margin we'll get into some specifics as we start to make a trade so what i suggest you do is either copy my list i'll publish it i'll put it in the link in the description or something like that but you need to find you know one or two or three or four items that you're comfortable with and i would suggest those being some pretty cheap and pretty high volume items because you may or may not have a lot to work with Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've picked out six or seven items that meet the criteria that I'm looking for. In general, I was after margins of about 10%. Uh, so if a module is around a million isk at total, then I'm looking for about 100,000 at margin. If it's about half a million, then half that much, or twice as much for twice that much, etc., etc. Um, it turns out my list is actually a little bit out of date. It was not quite as easy of a job as I thought it might be. A lot of the items that I was trading a few weeks ago with good margins have now shifted to be you know, very little profit or no profit. Um, I generally pick 10% because it does give you some room for error. Um, at perfect skills, you're going to be spending in the neighborhood of about two and a quarter percent combined between your sell and your purchase. And so, you know, by using about 10% as a ratio, not only have you given yourself a little bit of play, wiggle room if the prices do shift, uh, that you're not immediately into negative margin, but also you do have, you know, five or six or seven percent, ideally seven and a half percent that you can make in profit. And so all these items work for those criteria. Uh, of course, for you, by the time you're watching this video, they're not going to be the same items unless they are. And then, you know, Godspeed. So I've used Ballistic Control System 2, about 100,000 margin on that one. I know that's high volume because it's a ballistic control. Uh, Cruise Missile Launcher 2s. Not as high volume, just got traded in this recent patch. Uh, you don't have to know a whole bunch of game history to be a good trader. I mean, I'm just rattling these off to you and kind of commentating on my thoughts as I'm going through the list anyway. 
Again, there's a little more than 100,000 there on about a mil and a half. So maybe that's not great. I might get rid of that one. Uh, EM Ward Field 2, again, about 75,000 on a mil and a half. In fact, I'll just go ahead and dump that one right now. Reactive Armor Hardener 2, no, well, T1 or whatever it is. Um, this is about 40,000 on 350,000. So in ratio, that's pretty good. That's a little more than what I'm looking for. Uh, thermic Dissipation Field, you know, 200,000 on... 1.4 million is great. That's more than I'm after. Extra large ancillary shield booster, same exact situation. Extra large T2 shield booster, same situation. So these are all going to be pretty high volume. Uh, as you're feeling out items, you know it's not a it's not a precise science. Don't be afraid to jump in, make some mistakes. You know that's what this game is all about. And especially with the market, you know it's pretty forgiving. You're not you're gonna have to screw up pretty hard in order to really throw away your money. In the end, you might lose a couple thousand isk, and then, you know, big deal. You'll learn from it and make your next trade. So let's start trading. First of all, I'm gonna place a buy order in Ballistic Control System Two. I'm gonna come down here, make sure that my price is sifted, so that I've got the uh, highest buy price at the top. And there we go. And I'm gonna match that one plus. I'm gonna add a penny to it. Uh, now if I him and haw around a lot, I'm going to want to refresh this just to make sure that data is current. But basically we've got 995.500.17 is what we need to have the top order. And I'm not going to start with anything huge. Um, so let's go for about 10 units. And I'll hit the buy button. And there's my order. And so we'll go through the list and just do this for each one. And we'll see you guys back here in a minute. Okay, so I've just gone through and added a penny to each of those orders to shift my order onto the top of them. And as you can see now, the blue order is on top on each of those. So we are just kind of with a fishing pole in the water waiting for someone to want to sell one of these items, and that's fine. Uh, and it's kind of a good time, actually, we could talk about uh, the escrow. Because what's happened here is I have placed 10 quantity orders on each of these items. Uh, and it's amounted to a total of 64 million and a half. All right. And now, just before this tutorial, I emptied my wallet, and I started fresh with 50 mil. Um, just to give us a better idea of, you know, whether how much you were going to make per day or per hour or whatever, just so I can see the difference. Um, and what's happened is, I've placed buy orders for 64 mil, and I only have 34 mil. Now, mind you, what's happened is I've paid some money up front. And this is what happens. When you put in a buy order, you are saying, I will buy 10 of these units for X price. And what you would expect to happen is you would have to pay X price times 10 for those units. Um, as if to say, look, I've got the money and it's ready for you or wh whatever. But instead what happens is based on your skill, based on that escrow skill, uh, you put in a percentage. And so the way it works for me is I have to put in, I think, about 30%. I believe I'm missing one level of the skill. But I have to put in only a fraction of what the entire cost of the order would be. So there's an inherent problem here. It's like it's like uh, fractional reserve banking. I mean, tide goes in, tide goes out. You can't explain that, right? How does this work? Well, at some point, if you know half of these get filled and I run out of money, well, someone's going to go click the next one, and it's going to fail for them because I don't have any more money left in my wallet. And the escrow system has trusted that I've left money in there when I haven't really, and I've beat it. And for those of you who are really, you know, kind of on your toes about mechanics, you may have spotted uh, a very semi-obvious scam that you know is floating around with pretty good popularity right now uh, based on that same premise and it's a buy order that looks like it's offering to buy but maybe the person doesn't have any money and you wouldn't be able to tell all right so we're back over to a quick bar and we found that indeed somebody has gone outbid us by one penny again on our ballistic control system twos so what we're going to do is right click modify and then handy tip use the mouse scroll wheel just add two pennies to that, hit OK, and that's going to shift us back up on top. Uh, within this quick bar, you can select each one if you'd like to, or you can use directional arrow keys up and down. Super handy feature if you want to shift through and see which ones you need to change. Looks like I have to do a couple more. Uh, but pretty much we're going to shift these up uh, to the top space every time we can, which will be once every three minutes, four minutes, or something like that. Um, and that's pretty much all we can do for right now. All right, here's a chance to point out key opportunity number one, and that is the decimal rounding play. And what's happened here is this guy's actually got it wrong, by the way. Whoops. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, basically, what you would want to do is make it look like you're shifting the order in regular pattern. 
So for example, mine was uh, 1301027.18. So what he should have done is gone to 0.19, but then also gone behind the digit and shifted this into an 8. And what that's done is if you were to shift that, it would make your eye see that 19, 18 change. And you would imme immediately think, as usual, okay, I'll go shift it by a penny. And what you haven't seen is that decimal behind it shift. And so that's one way you can definitely stay on top of, uh, you know, some people who aren't paying attention. So let's go ahead and try it with this ancillary shield booster. So rather than going 650, uh, 063.41, that would be the regular shift to put me in the top space. Instead of 063, I'm going to go 064. Or if you want it to be even trickier, rather than shifting there, we could shift the 6 into an 8. We could play off the uh, natural quality of the numbers there to play on your eye. Now, as you can see there, if you're just quickly looking over it, you might not notice that six has been shifted into an eight. You go to shift your order by a penny, and you'll find that I'm still on top. Okay, it's a beautiful and significant moment. So I've gone to shift my order into the top spot, and of course I've got the operational delay. Uh, I can't modify my order yet. It's up in 20 seconds, and so, you know, in this case I'll wait 20 seconds. Maybe next time, if it's a little longer, I won't wait 20 seconds, and I'll actually put up a second buy order, maybe for less quantity, maybe for the same, depends on my wallet's looking. Uh, and that'll give me two total orders that I can shift in alternating fashion, and that'll give me, obviously, half of the cooldown, and I can keep having that top order. So, um, probably waited long enough. Like I say, if you are going to wait that time or you want to refresh this page every once in a while, you don't want to get old data. That always sucks when you go for a refresh. And in fact, you've had old data and you're not on top anyhow. Uh, so we're back on top there. And it looks like somebody's actually filled all 10 of our cruise missiles in one go. So without even listing those again, I'm going to go up for a second sell order, buy order rather. Uh, 1610.010.49 puts us on top for 10 quantity. And up that goes. All right, so those cruise missile launcher twos have already sold. Uh, I've got a buy order up for another 10 of them. Uh, continuing to shift the rest of my orders, have items trickling in pretty continuously. So uh, unfortunately for this episode, it's time pretty much that we wrap up. Uh, to close, I did want to conclude and give you some options for what you can do to continue along this path if you choose to keep trading with these items or a similar set. Uh, just continue to upgrade on your buy order quantities. Uh, the more wealth you gain through this, you can continue to scale by increasing your buying capacity uh, when you're not even at the computer, just by increasing the number of quantity that you are offering on your buy order. And of course you saw when somebody came in and just dropped that uh, 10 stack of Cruise Missile Launcher 2s, filled my buy order up right away. And of course who knows how many that person had, maybe he had 50, 20, doesn't matter. If I could have had more than 10 up, I would have had, you know, more profit than I did. So until next time guys, keep trading and uh, keep tuning back in. Thanks a lot for watching.